And this is your Mountaineer Chestnut Tree. And I'm sorry I can't fit this all in one frame. If you were to make a checklist of all the things you wanted to recreate from the American Chestnut Tree, the Mountaineer would check off most of those boxes. And you might ask myself why these are in such a crowded condition, and I can give you two answers. When I initially started this planting, back in 1990, this was still part of my father's uh, cattle farm. He pastured this field, and I couldn't very well eat up his whole field with chestnut trees, so that was one reason. The second reason, everything I'd read about chestnut trees up to that point, especially anything with American parentage in it, I was told, or I'd read, they were difficult to keep alive due to blight. So I crap planted these closely, assuming quite a few would die out. And as you can see, that hasn't been the case. I had very little mortality in this orchard. But let's talk about a few of the reasons why we want to graft to recreate this Mountaineer Chestnut tree. The growth has been phenomenal. This is a 1999 seedling. One parent is full American. The male parent was a one quarter American hybrid. So this tree is approximately 62.5% American chestnut. It is not fully blight resistant. It has good resistance for a hybrid. Several years ago, I inoculated this tree with blight. You can see that right here. And then you can see after a few years, it had complete healing. Now this tree also gets some natural infections. And again, you can see several areas where the bark is swollen. Down here, you back off a little bit, you can see this better. Down here next to the base, you can see a nice swollen area. But the tree appears to heal over that with minimal damage to the tree. The tree's still growing with much vigor. Here's another canker up towards the top. I'm not sure if you can see that in this lighting. It's not showing up very well. Let me go around to the other side. See if we can see another one of those cankers. And we're just not going to be able to focus that in this lighting. But trust me, there's some blight on this tree. But the tree seems to do a good job healing it. So I mentioned, what if we had a checklist? The leaves look very American. Have the hooked ends. I've had a few people look at this and assumed it was a full American. The nuts look very American in appearance, although a bit larger than a pure American. One of my problems, as I said, this tree is 55 feet tall, is growing at the rate of about 2.7 feet per year. All the flowers are in the top. I cannot do any further breeding with this tree in this situation. The diameter is about 14, 14 and a half inches in diameter. It's a big tree. So it's got all the growth, it's got the vigor. This is also one of the few trees in my orchard that after Hurricane Sandy dumped 20 inches of very wet, heavy snow, this is one of the few trees that suffer no damage whatsoever. If you look through my orchard, you'll see quite a few trees with these bent, misshapen branches. That's from Hurricane Sandy, and this one suffered none. I'm sorry this video is probably not showing you quite how big this tree actually is. But we'll head over and show you a few of the graphs in a moment. First, let me give you a couple, a few thoughts on why this tree may have some good blight resistance. Your typical American tree has no blight resistance at all. And I'll show you a typical American. This is a typical American chestnut tree. This was a seedling I planted from a, a nut collected over Sugarloaf Mountain with Dr. Dennis Fulbright.
and any typical American is not it doesn't have to reach a very big size at all before blight finds it infects it kills it you can see the main stem is completely dead nothing on it it's trying to sprout from the base send up a few shoots and if you use a typical American tree in a breeding program, you're going to get a lot of the characteristics you want, but you get no blight resistant water whatsoever from this parent. The American chestnut tree that I used for the mountaineer is actually American, which has some good resistance. I don't have it here at the farm, but I do have a, a tree growing, a pure American tree from that one, and it's got an equal amount of resistance. I'll show that to you next. This American chestnut tree is a half sibling to the mountaineer. It has the same female parent, but it doesn't grow like a typical American. It has the, the, the timber form, it has the vigor, but it actually has some blight resistance. And you can see this tree's actually got some catkins on it this year. I want to get up on a pollination, la pollination ladder in just a moment to see if there's any female flowers that we can use this year. But let's go in closer, we can actually see the trunk of this tree. And you remember the other American I just showed you that I showed complete death of the main stem? Look at this. This tree's infected with blight, but you see a lot of callousing. This tree's making an attempt to heal over the blight infection. It's not very pretty, but it's allowing the tree to grow. The tree's thriving. Everywhere up above that, you're getting a nice timber form which is not real clear here. Let me circle back around on the other side of the tree. And there you can see some nice timber form, very straight. And that is why I believe the mountaineer tree has a little better resistance than your typical hybrid. It may not have received all, a lot of resistance from the female parent, but it's received some. Okay, finally, here are the mountaineer grafts. And I can't be real certain if these are the ones I did in 2016 in the video, or maybe the ones I did the following year in 2017. But these are all surrounded with chicken wire that are four feet tall and you can see the very vigorous growth and you can see already all these catkins forming like if I can zoom in you can see some of these catkins already starting to shed I'll actually collect a few of these catkins today I'll take those home the ones that are shedding heavily dry them with some silica gel and freeze those. If not used this year, they'll still be good for next year. But these things are ready to top the four foot cage. And let me show you another one. So if you remember, the reason I couldn't do much with the mountaineer tree, it's 55 feet tall, can't reach anything on it. But here, this is shedding good pollen, still inside of a four-foot cage. The reason your grafted trees bear so early, this is still mature wood. The, the mountaineer tree already went through the juvenile stage. So the scions you use are mature. So it does not have to go through the juvenile stage again. Hopefully in a year or two, I'll get some female flowers on these. Now, in addition to the grafted mountaineers, I've also got a few seedling trees. These particular seedlings that are growing here are mountaineer seedlings. They're not grafts, they're seedling trees. So it's gonna be quite a while before there's any flowers or pollen on these to use. One of the goals is that if I can cross the mountaineer graft to the seedling trees, in cattle they call that line breeding, where you'll breed a uh, parent back to 
one of the offspring and trying to fix certain traits. So I'm hoping with the same thing here. I cross them out in their back to a few of the seedlings. There is that chance that we will recover some of the growth, the vigor, the form, hopefully with some additional blight resistance. This is the Mountaineer sibling. It has the same parents, planted the same year, 1999. There are a lot of similarities between this one and the Mountaineer tree, but also a few differences. The leaves look very American in appearance. Very vigorous growth. It's loaded with catkins this year. Normally this tree is a good producer. I was on a ladder just a few days ago to place some bags for pollination. And despite all the catkins on this tree, I could not find a single female flower, at least one. It was within reach of my ladder, and it's possible these trees have suffered some frost damage earlier in the year, which I have missed. The nuts are almost identical to what you would see on the Mountaineer tree, but it does not have the, the diameter growth, nor is it as tall. Several years ago, this tree suffered some buck rub on it. You can see a little bit of a wound. It's completely healed. It's got some minor blight damage on it so in that respect this tree is actually a little more blight resistant than the mountaineer just maybe not quite the grower that it is i allowed a sprout after the buck damage i allowed a sprout to come up just in case you know, the tree didn't recover i've just allowed both those to grow my goal is eventually cross this sibling with the Mountaineer. Hopefully, if I'm able to cross the two trees, some of the seedlings will have high blight resistance. There'll be a few that will have a good timber growth. I'm hoping there's that unique individual or two that will inherit all those characteristics. I will keep everyone posted. Thank you.